Those unable to escape being treated unjustly came to the conclusion that we must mutually agree neither to inflict injustice nor to suffer it. This justice doesn't gain its value because it is good, but because of the inability to inflict injustice. But justice then is born out of a spirit of vengeance rather than virtue hobbling those that can inflict it with impunity rather than elevating the virtue of all members of society. One might say that justice is not a good to the individual. The road of virtue is one that is always touted as a difficult road to travel, while the path of vice is easy and seductive. It is not as important to be just as it is to seem just. It can be said that there are no benefits of acting justly, no tangible benefits. A solid reputation, the respect of peers, a high-ranking office is almost easier for the perfectly unjust person to attain. That is, they are so adept at committing injustice that they can do it without detection and therefore do it at will. So the punishment is not a consideration. And it is in fact in their benefit to trick, scam, and generally walk all over their fellow human beings. After all, isn't everyone unjust when he or she believes injustice possible? Possible without punishment. I love alliteration. Okay, but then what does justice mean to the actions of the individual? Plato calls a society just when each class of individual attends to the work for which they are best suited. And the natures of individuals can be compared to this. Even though, yes, I don't agree with his class system that he set up. He makes a good comparison between a well-functioning society and a well-functioning or a just individual. If we take desire, reason, and spirit to be separate parts of a person's soul, for lack of a better word, we could possibly say that the just person is the person who has each of these natures in their proper proportion. We can definitely say that the person whose desire overrides their reason will habitually act in an unjust manner. So all three of these are necessary, but if any one dominates too much over the other, it's not good. Whether it's just or unjust is up for debate, I guess, but there's something to be said for the balance and harmony of these different aspects of a person's personality or soul. Justice, then, becomes not a standard toward which people should strive, but a property of the soul which has its natures in harmony. There is nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To determine which actions are just and unjust, we could fill encyclopedic volumes for generation upon generation, which has been done. But to what end? They are nothing more than an aggregate of past decisions on a case-by-case -case basis, or fantastical scenarios worthy of Tolkien. Examining past occasions of injustice, while useful to a point when a controversial ethical question arises, cannot help to determine objective moral standards, true justice. The decisions of courts appear to be nothing more than a catalog of injustice, which pushes people to determine the very limits of the liberties that they can take without acting unjustly. How can we climb to the apex of justice when we're tap dancing on the precipice? Justice does not exist in and of itself. It is an invention of humanity and is subject to the varied and transient whims that same species is heir to. And in that sense, justice does exist and in many, many forms. Justice on the prison yard, on the playground, on the battlefield, are all very, very real to those who will be judged unfavorably. And then, since what is called justice is subject to the prejudices of local inhabitants, it is a fruitless endeavor to try to determine a singularly superior moral code. However, <laughs> this also doesn't mean we shouldn't utilize the generation's worth of material on this very subject, which has been cultivated by much grander and loftier souls than I. And in the same manner that gravity and evolution are unverified as laws, 
we can discern broad moral brushstrokes through empirical evidence. So, justice is a very real thing, despite what moral vacuums like me may wish. There is the justice that exists in the sham of a judicial system that effuses blind fairness and the right of each member of society to be protected by it, while shamelessly ignoring all complaints of injustice that don't involve the transfer of large sums of money. Justice also exists on a very primitive level of social interaction, where the larger group is all too ready and willing to slap down a member of their group to either teach them a lesson or to simply exert their control over someone who is weaker. But there are no cosmic scales that we should try to balance with our weighty moral actions. There are no metaphysical punishments or rewards for helping a single mother carry a stroller up the subway stairs or striking that same child dead on the altar of a church. Yet, somehow, for the most part, we can agree that certain things are right and wrong. But this is all that justice consists of. Our agreements at any given moment. It is a contract that is not adamantine, but constantly under negotiation. Plato calls a society just when each stri- ah, fuck. And then, since what is called justice is subject 